Let's look at Illustrator and some basic tools. Let's open up an artboard first or a file. Let's create new, give it a name. Uh, it's always best that if you're going to be giving this to the teacher to um, print, put your name on it, and then the project that you're doing. And the default settings uh, should be A4 at vertical orientation. And there's our artboard as it's known in Illustrator. So I'm just going to drag the, um, the palette so I can show you what's available to us. Let's start with the pen tool. So the pen tool has um, four versions within it. So it's got, you've got your pen tool, you have your add anchor point, you have your delete anchor point, and you have conversion um, anchor point tool. So let's have a look at what this can do. So as we've just seen, if you click, move the mouse, click, move the mouse, click, move the mouse, click. And each time I'm clicking, I have first moved the mouse to a new location. And by doing that, by clicking, I deposit an anchor. And that anchor is in a sequence of anchors, therefore creating a line. Um, if you, if you uh, select the V, key on your keyboard it changes the pen tool which is P um, and you get the selection tool and this enables you to do things uh, you move it around or modify it in in scale and the like um, and we saw that we've got the direct selection tool which allows you to change the location of the anchors themselves. Okay, let, why don't you pause the video and just try that. Now, we've got um, another way of using the pen tool. Now, the pen tool can also make curves, but it's used a little differently. So this time, you can click, hold down uh, the left part of the mouse, and drag move your um, your pen tool to a new location click hold down the left of your mouse and drag click and drag click and drag click and drag and then you create for yourself a curved line alrighty so that's the, the two ways we use the pen tool. So, so far we've used what's called a stroke. But in fact, we've been using this other thing called a fill as well. So, if we were to select the object, so it looks like we've just drawn a plain line. In fact, because of the white uh, background of the artboard, we can't quite see exactly what's been happening. Let me select the, the zigzag here. Okay. Um, and let's have a look at this area of the palette, which is known as the fill and the stroke. The fill simply um, refers to the color of a shape, and the stroke is the line. So remember, fill, stroke. Now, you can move these around. If, you, if I click on the stroke, it puts the stroke on top. If I click on the fill, it puts the fill on top. Now, when the fill or the stroke is on top, it means I can go to my swatches and on the right-hand side here, and I can choose a color. And in fact, that's what we've, we have been doing all this time. We've actually been using, though we couldn't see it, we've been using a fill which has really made a much more complex form than the plain line. Um, however, this is not what we want. We want just to see the zigzag. So what you do is you select the object you want to change. You go back to the fill and stroke 
and making sure that the fill is on top you just simply go none which is this little red diagonal line in this little box beneath it and click and we have a plain line uh, in the case of the the curve um, that's what we had in fact and again we can just go to to line have a go at that please let's make some shapes um, just select this, your lines delete them and let's have a, a go at making some shapes so the way a shape is created um, with uh, in Illustrator is that yes to have a starting point your first anchor point and you can just create any random shape and the most important thing is this just to show you I need to zoom in now when you've reached the end you've come back full circuit you'll get a little circle at the bottom right of your pen tool that signifies that you've reached the beginning point with your last anchor as you deposit it on top of each other it has now a it is now a closed shape so it is now one entity that is sorry a, a single object that has uh, which is enclosed it's not broken it's not open it's a single it's a single shape and now this enables us to have much more control when we plonk uh, the color into it alrighty now let's do the same thing with the making a curved object so making sure you've got the little red line going through it okay so let's make a beginning here and remembering the way we finish off is by hovering over the original anchor point and clicking on that and now we have a shape and then we can give it its fill but if we um, if we weren't quite happy with that we would of course go to the direct selection tool and modify the position of these anchors you can change the location of the anchor or you can actually draw on the handles that is pull them in or out in order to change the curve let's have a look now at um, the pathfinder tool and uh, the pathfinder tool you'll find in window pathfinder uh, I've already got it open here now what this does is enables you to combine um, simple uh, shapes or complex shapes into one if we go to our rectangle tool you'll find a whole range of tools there as well we have our um, rectangle tool our rounded corner rectangle tool our ellipse or circle tool polygon tool which also is your triangle and your star tool mm, let's try maybe a little a, a simple house shape um, and here we have a rectangle click and click and drag to the shape of the rectangle or you can tell it numerically how big you want the rectangle um, let's see I'd like it to be 10 by 20 it's tiny that's all right I can uh, go to my control key or command key and holding down the shift key I can click on the corner and drag out and what this does is uh, it makes the object larger proportionally or smaller proportionally height to width doesn't change in proportion okay um, or I can just ignore all that and make it more kind of squarish now I would like also a roof to my little house so I'll go to the star tool click on it and ask for three sides and I don't know how big that is I'll change it later here we go um, 
I can just put it on and then just change the size to suit and I get this little guide telling me I have an alignment with the triangle with the and the square and I stop there so there is my roof looks a little silly I make it shorter just by squashing it all it was to click and drag there we go um, if we zoom in uh, you'll notice that the corners are pretty sharp um, what I would like to do is to actually smooth out that corner so I go to the right hand side we haven't visited the right hand side tool um, you've got a whole bunch of tools here as well which are is it which is your modifying palette so I'm, I'll click on the stroke and you'll have you'll have this off you need to turn that on show options for your for the stroke tool and you have a whole uh, selection of ways you want to see the corners of um, lines or strokes I always prefer to use the middle section here which gives you a, a curve or a controlled rounded uh, join and there you go so I've got rid of that little um, uh, sharp corner okay so um, I have my my two shapes I should just give them some colors shouldn't I um, I'm trying to make this little house logo alrighty so there's my sh two shapes so far but I want this to be one shape and the way I do that is I select both I've got Pathfinder open um, so window Pathfinder and Pathfinder is a tool um, that allows you to either unite or combine shapes together or make holes in shapes and there's a whole bunch of other things it does as well divide and the like so let's have a look at what happens if we if we unite I'm not sure what's something showing the okay all it's done now is the triangle and the square are one shape so this is for me just the beginning I would like to put punch a hole in the bottom there so I'll go back to my rectangle tool and I, th I would like to put a hole right there notice that I haven't really cared about uh, it being within the shape here I've got it overlapping um, I go back to my pathfinder and I select both those shapes and go to the second one which is exclude the front from the back and there I have now a um, a hole in the front of my little house um, okay why don't you have a go just try to do what I just did there alrighty so um, let's have a look at now uh, at, at the layers on the again it's the right hand side um, menu or uh, palette and um, you can create as many layers as you like so we're going to create one more layer and so I've got layer 2 and layer 1 I can change their location the sorry their position I'm going to drag layer 2 under layer 1 and um, once I've done that what this means is I can take uh, I'm going to, I was going to create a little background of of blue so I've got the last thing I've selected I've got my fill which is on top and I go to the right hand side to my swatches and there's my blue so you can actually tell now that uh, what I did before was to literally punch a hole um, in that shape okay have a go at playing with layers now <clears throat> so we've got our we've got our layers we have know about stroke and fill pen tool shape tool I think we're ready to start um, and creating something and we'll learn a few more things along the way <laughs> 